Hey everyone, Caddy here, and today I decided to tackle a 2D Sonic game. Yes, this is a new one for me, isn't it? But after I heard and saw so much about the game, I couldn't help myself, and now I've played it, I like Sonic now. I am not kidding. This is the game that has made me like Sonic the fucking Hedgehog and understand what the appeal with him is now. When he's not opening his damn mouth and is just looking cute, running fast through awesome levels with awesome controls, I get it now. If I can say that as a non-Sonic fan, even after playing through something as flaccid and bad as Sonic Forces, I implore you all to at least give the game a shot if you're in the same boat as I was. And hey, this wasn't even made by Sonic Team, you know, the actual people who make official Sonic games, so if you were as skeptical as I was, don't be. I mean, Sonic 2 and Sonic Advance 2 are great, but I still didn't get Sonic from them. I've still been in a very love-hate relationship with him. But here, you can see the quality of the game by just looking at it. Look at it! This is some of the most gorgeous pixel art and a fast-speed 2D platformer I've ever seen, and I actually feel sorry for missing all the effort gone into every frame of pixel animation hiding in the stages that you just end up running past and only ever exist on your screen for about 10 frames per stage. For such a fast game, it could have got away with cutting corners like in some racing games, but it never does, which is admirable and every sprite, contrast in colour and animated background works in tangent with the soundtrack perfectly to not only appeal to the nostalgia of classic Sonic, but also impress any general player from just how vibrant and exhaustive the level of detail is here. And Christian Whitehead, the lead developer of this game and also commissioned in the past to do ports of the original Sonic games on mobile devices, works incredibly well with the soundtrack by T. Lopes and after all that hype, T, I'm not disappointed. I was so excited to hear the music in Sonic Mania ever since some call me Johnny's new Versus theme in his game review series that he got composed for him, but I was not expecting the amount of different genres, instrumentation and balance between nostalgic Genesis twangs and totally crisp, sharp and modern accents blasting it forward into the realm of godlike for 2D platformers everywhere. This doesn't mean anything without a game to back it up though, and in Sonic Mania the game plays as good as it looks. The controls are eerily tight and precise to any button input, and the physics I found to be totally flawless with what I expected the game to behave like, you know, jump heights, the speed from walking to running, the momentum that you could garner over the ramps and loops, it all felt just right, a lot better than this bullshit in Forces, and I loved how it also worked into the level design instead of against it, like in something like Mario's controls clashing with the design in the original Lost Levels. The stages in this game are immensely free-flowing and truly open-ended. For this playthrough I recorded, I played as Knuckles because I'm Sonic the Hedgehog! Never heard of ya. He's my favourite. But even after replaying the game as Sonic and Tails, I was discovering new things, new mini mechanics for traversing the level, and new routes to new secrets every time I replayed, which is pretty amazing. All from Sonic's ultra-fast launching off of ramps to get to places that no one else could, to Tails' is flying and Knuckles gliding and climbing. You will never replay the same stage the same way twice unless you know the stage inside out, even if you play as the same character, which makes them all that more interesting to explore through for all the secrets, Chaos Emeralds, and 100% completion. Or just speeding from one end of the stage to the other. The game is built for any kind of playstyle if you don't like Sonic's ultra speed or the slower pace of Knuckles alongside the different route opportunities that come with it. Even if you start to pick up speed, the levels have been built for it with the responsive controls and reliable physics making platforming and jumping over dangers a non-issue. Everything on screen has been planned around being able to react around it with visual coding with colours of enemies and if you should jump on them or roll into them or avoid projectiles, and it gives you just the right amount of time, vital milliseconds even, for you to decide what button to press next when you're going fast depending on what's coming up. Up. Not too much time for it to be a cakewalk, and not too small amount of time for it to be unfair, and like I said, the visual coding works really well with the 60fps so that you can just about see what's coming up and register what's going on in time for it to be insanely satisfying when you react accordingly. Even where sprites are placed with their altitude gives you great indications on what to do for each specific hazard approaching, and which direction you should be holding to speed up, slow down, or if you should jump and glide, it's all handled so naturally that it becomes second nature the more you play the game. Because of this, I was able to get over 100 rings multiple times on a few zones which is unheard of for me in a Sonic game, but everything feels like it's been planned with purpose, either for speed or reaction platforming. And I know me saying all of this makes it sound like the game is too easy, but trust me, it did kick my ass a few times. With something this open-ended, fast-paced and windy, that's bound to be the case, and you will run into a few unexpected surprises and traps that will stop your flow or kill you, but it all feels entirely fair and not just random roadblocks making you lose your rings. You're given chances to avoid most of these things, meaning to compensate for the challenge, there's more things 
happening every other second to make it worth you paying attention to the game. I haven't played every single 2D Sonic game ever made, but from the ones I've seen, I must admit, I found this to be the best design one I think I've played so far. I know that's a controversial statement to make if I'm not a Sonic fan, but that's just what I thought here. I mean, I can actually play this one and still make mistakes and fuck up in every single fucking sphere bonus stage, but I never quit once from frustration, like in Labyrinth Zone in Sonic 1 or even Sky Canyon in Sonic Advance 2 for as great as that game is. Either with the constant sluggish design punishing you greatly for one tiny error and giving you no chances to recover, or instant death traps absolutely everywhere. Saying that though, this part in Chemical Plant in Mania can fuck right off. Seriously, what the hell happened here? Unfortunately, it's those kinds of things for me that stops any Sonic game from being exceptional though. Those random design quirks that make zero sense and that only ever seem to be in Sonic games. Whether it's for the speed or the 2D nature, I don't know. Especially in this part of Oil Ocean. I still have no fucking clue how to do this boss properly. You get hit once, lose every ring, sinking with no chance to grab them again because of the sticky oil you can barely move in, and then you're totally stuck under the platforms, unable to get up and die in one hit from the tons of attacks following afterwards. I had to cheese this boss to beat it, and that didn't feel too good. You do need to accept though that this is, for as good as it is, still 2D Sonic, and it comes with a few of those issues whether you like it or not. And for as good and fair I found the level design to be, you will run into the odd thing that is impossible to predict, just to make sure you're still awake. And I did game over a few times, but I never once rage quitted. In this playthrough it took me 7 hours to finish the story before I went back and did everything else again for secrets, and still, I never felt angry enough to take a break. It's so addictive, and every challenge presented to me I had a great time going up against. The game also has a great sense of humour, there's no insanely stupid over serious plot like in and I found most of the bosses great fun with tons of self-aware throwbacks and funny memorable moments. I've got to be honest, one of my highlights of 2017 gaming was playing a game of Mean Bean Machine, followed by a boss disguising itself as Fang, Bean and Bark from the shit show that is Sonic the Fighters. And I'm not even a Sonic fan, so God knows how an actual fan feels about all of this. I don't fucking care, Sonic Mania is amazing, you should go fucking buy it! Show Sega where the money is and hopefully this leads to more original shit! Okay, yeah, he really liked it. It was also great to see not only a classic pixelated style that loads of games do, but then have Mania go further with more graphical styles like the Saturn-like 3D special stages and even the Genesis-like 3D bonuses which were completely adorable to see make a resurgence. Not to mention those UFO chasing Saturn stages totally kick ass under a pulse pounding challenge and the Chaos Emeralds being tackled one after the other whenever you find a bonus ring I massively preferred over only having one chance to grab it per zone. I must ask though, did anyone else think they went a bit overboard with the sphere stages? They're fine for the first few times, but I think a good one sixth of the game was me trying to jump and spin around these visually and mechanically identical bonuses that made me feel a little bit motion sick, and it did get a bit grating after a while. Obviously along with this, the game does rely on tons of references and nostalgia. You need to understand that this is a Sonic game made by and for Sonic lovers, and so you will come across things that you aren't the biggest fan of from multiple past installments, and even playthrough segments that have already been done in the past, which I guess is subjective to what you like and dislike from Sonic, but if I could find Hydro City tolerable for as slow and slack the gameplay halts sometimes, then that speaks volumes for my opinions of the game as a whole. And what's even better is how much content and varying gameplay you get for the price. Okay, it's not the cheapest indie game out there, but fucking hell. It's three times as long, three times as fun, three times as beautiful and mechanically satisfying, and three times as worth the value over Sonic Forces any day of the week, and that was an official Sonic Team title by the actual people who make this game. I mean, this costs twice as much as Sonic Mania, why? If you want a Sonic game made by people who actually understand and love the core of Sonic instead of just blindly making Sonic games because they know they'll make millions from it, then get this one. And seriously, compared to Sonic Forces, Sonic Team should be fucking ashamed with themselves. As a love letter staying as close to the classic style as possible, it's great enough, but as an actual platforming video game in an established franchise since the early 90s, it's equally as impressive with how modern and tight it feels. Especially considering that Sonic only existed in the first place to be the edgy rival to Mario and be fast just for the sake of being fast. And despite all of the trappings that inevitably comes with classic Sonic for the type of game it is, I must be honest, this is now my favourite 2D Sonic I've played to date, and I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. It's amazing. If it's your birthday today while watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Aye, 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 aye. Subscribe.
Hey everybody, and thanks so much for watching my review of Sonic Mania. I know it's a bit late, but you know, I was off for a bit of time last year and I needed to catch up with some things, so hope you enjoyed it either way. And special thanks to all the names on the screen right now that have helped support my job through most of YouTube's biggest bullshit. So thanks again, guys. And special thanks to all of my top tier supporters. Omar Matu, Basil, Patrick Ferguson, Andy Ellis, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Mills Kohai, Alicia Knightley, Super Spyro Fan 2010, Daniel Leon, Jane Ives, Carsten, Mitchell Reed, Tiago Pereira, A.D. Thornton Smith, Oblivion Rising, Noxius, Ellen Rilpley, Kirsten B., QB, Nathan Young, and Nicole Ganara. Thank you so much, every single one of you.